one of the most popular videos on this channel was one I did several years back on using a bill hook to split wood in a forest school way. That has generated a lot of views, a lot of comments and maybe a bit of controversy. It was originally filmed when I was doing my forest school portfolio, the, the part of, as part of my level 3 forest school qualification. And in that I've been taught to use one of these, a bill hook for splitting wood. So the idea is you'd get one child, so this is for working with children, it's a safe way of splitting wood. So one child would hold the bill hook, the other child would, would hit the top of the bill hook and you would split a piece of wood for fire lighting, for crafting, for whatever. And that has been accepted practice for quite some time. Now, several years on and further into my forest school career and with a lot more experience, um, this is no longer the tool I use and not the tool that I would recommend for splitting wood, even if it's working with children. So, we'll get into exactly what I use, why I use it, and a few ra a range of splitting tools in a moment. So just keep watching. So, starting off with why I don't use a bill hook anymore. Because, mainly because I don't think it's the right tool for the job. The job this is designed for and the job that we use it for in forest school, two very different things. So for those of you who haven't come across a bill hook before, it's a, I'd probably best describe it as an Englishman's machete. This is a tool that's designed for hedge laying, where you would split through part of a, an upright hedge stem and then pull it over and lay them flat or horizontally and then shoots from those, those split um, stems that have been laid horizontally will then sh send shoots upwards and you end up with a very dense hedge at the bottom and then a good growing hedge up from that. So it delimits those holes at the bottom. I will see if I can link to a video that will show you about that in the description. But yeah, so it is a slashing tool. That's evidenced by the thin profile. It's a very thin profile. The curved shape as well. That's for hooking onto branches and pulling it. So it's a very effective swinging tool for swinging through um, brush. So it also works exceptionally well for bramble clearance, for thin stems, for um, slightly woodier plants like foxgloves or nettles, so on. It just, you swing it and it cuts through brush. It's very good for that. The handle is very close to the blade, so you have a lot of control. But there are a few disadvantages, especially when you use it for splitting wood. So as I said, thin profile. Thin profile is perfect for slicing through something because there isn't very much resistance. But if you're looking to split something, what you want is a wedge shape. So it pushes in and pushes the two sides of the, of the thing you're splitting apart. So it doesn't have a wedge shape. Also, it has a very narrow back, which if you're using it with two people or one person with a mallet, so you're hitting it on the side, like that, then a lot of the force is lost, is distributed over a smaller area. So that means you're more likely to bend over the back and you're more likely to damage whatever mallet or tool you're using. And like I said, the handle is very close to the blade and the back of the blade. So that means whenever you're hitting the back of the 
the bell hook, you're very close to the top of your fingers, particularly if you're working with children and the aim just isn't that great. So I used a bell hook for, an, for a number of, for about a year or so, before moving on to an axe. Now an axe is designed for splitting. We can tell that straight out. So if we look at the shape, it's a wedge shape. The axes that are designed specifically for splitting will have more of a wedge, and the ones for carving will have a slightly flatter edge. Yep. Okay. It has a short blade. So all of the force that you're generating will be delivered in a small section by section so more more square more force in one particular location you also have a comparatively longer handle if we compare the two you can see most of the axis is handle this gives us more force because it's a leverage so fulcrum point is here and you're going to be swinging the force a greater distance so more force. Final thing is the head is a lot heavier so that means you have you can work with gravity it's tiring to use for often so you would tire out quite quickly if you're slashing through brush but for quick controlled hits of the hammer to split wood is pretty good. So this is where I went to axe and the way you'd use an axe to split is you'd hold one person would hold it out and the other person would hit the back of the axe head and then you'd drive it into the wood so same thing with children you have one person kneeling down at either side and go they'd hit the top and it would drive it through that way the person holding the end of the axe has their hand really far away from the head and the person can also has a broader area to hit on right there. So axe worked pretty decently and still something I use. But there is a good reason why you wouldn't go straight to an axe. So as we said before, the long handle the weighted head. This means that particularly for younger children is quite difficult to hold and then when the axe goes through the wood it has a chance to swing and depending on where it swings to you could end up with injuries. So in that case the potential because of the long handle the potential for damage and potential safety concerns are greater which is probably why people look to the bullhooks first because I said Handles close to the blade, more control. Handle further away, more power, less control. The other problem with the axe, particularly with axes like these, is they're not actually designed to have anything hit them on the back. Okay. First of all, if you hit it with something quite hard, like a hammer, then you can actually mushroom out to the head of the back. And the other thing is, as we can see there, the wooden handle goes through the eye in the axe head. Now that is held together with force, so the, the wedge, the wedge there, the circular wedge, is driven in to mushroom the, the end of that handle outwards to hold it in with friction. You don't typically have glue on this. What happens is if you hit the back hard enough, you can begin to spread this eye outwards and deform the shape and that can create a loose axe head. Of course a loose axe head is a dangerous axe head. It makes it for a dangerous axe. Imagine you swing it over your head and it goes flying behind you or you knock into a piece of wood and the handle splits out of the head. That's a problem. Now a lot of the that can be solved by using a hardware axe. I've had this one for several years and this is actually the axe that I use with children when we're splitting because 
is not the greatest axe, not particularly sharp, but what it does really well is the axe head, the axe handle is actually glued in and it's, it's solid. It's solid, so I don't have to worry about the axe head coming off because I'm not going to be swinging it. This is just purely for use of splitting. This is a dedicated axe that I use just for splitting wood using a mallet. Now, the problem with this, again, is that this is quite a heavy axe. So this is something that I generally use. So I'll be the one holding it, I'll be the one holding it, and then the other child with the mallet will hit the head. And that's a great way to get children started with splitting. If you don't know them that well, if you're not sure how well they work with the tools, this is a good way to start it out. Your hands are really far away from the axe head. Okay. You've got a whole lot of control if you use two hands. It's a very safe way of using an axe. But as I said, probably needs to be an adult holding it just because of the weight and again that leverage. So at this point you're probably asking, well if I want something that has the control and safety of a bill hook but the splitting power of an axe and the, and the ability to keep your hands away from where the blows strike, well what do I use? And there is a purpose built tool. Like I said, axes aren't generally used with mallets. They're not usually designed to be struck on the back of the axe head. Bill hooks also not designed for that, but there is a tool that is specifically designed for that, and that is the fro. The fro has a handle set at 90 degrees to the blade, and the blade sits at the bottom edge. This means when you hold it up here, you can then split, you can then hit it with the mallet down there. You've got that distance, that vertical and horizontal distance from the thing that you're splitting. Okay. And if we look at the profile, it's not quite as wedge-shaped as, as an axe, but it has a decent amount. It has a decent amount of splitting power. So it's designed to split things apart. This is what was historically used to make cedar shingles or other shingles for wooden roofs. As you can see, throw is pretty simple to use. Just set it up, and there. Simple as that. You have the ability to set yourself up very controlled splits of wood, and you also When you sink it into something, you also have that leverage twist. Let's knock it in just a little bit further. This is quite well seasoned, so it's splitting quite easily. Got the leverage on the handle. You can split a piece. The fro has that ideal combination of uh, durability. It is designed to be hit on the back of the handle of the head. It gives you control, it's safe, and it's effective. So I encourage you to have a look at the fro as a tool. Now, the final tool that is probably worth talking about is applicable. If I just split this down quickly. I mean, you keep splitting, you go keep splitting. Eventually you get to the point where you're gonna to struggle to get an ax or a fro to sit in the top of that to split wood. If you're really looking for that fine kindling for, for a fire start, then the answer to look at is a knife. In this case, a more knife. Now, for all of the others, you would typically have two people. If you're working with children, particularly younger ones, you'd have two people, one holding the tool, the other person hitting it. Now, obviously, 
knife has the same issues that a bill hook has, where the, um, the handle and the knife blade are very close together. So this is for those, those older children who can be trusted to use a knife safely. They can hold it firmly, there's not a lot of weight to it. They can get a mallet or another piece of wood and just tap it through, just batten it. The way through and you can get quite small slivers of wood. Now, there is a point where <laughs> diminishing of returns apply. And we get thinner and thinner. There we go. As you can probably tell at this point, I'm a big believer in the right tool for the job and in assembling a range of tools if you're looking to do a range of jobs. If I'm looking to go out and clear some brambles from, and nettles from a site, I believe I'd go to the bill hook. If I'm looking to split really fine kindling, it's a belt knife. If I'm looking to split rounds of wood on my own, it's probably going to be an axe. If I'm looking to split wood safely with children, a fro. It's all about making the choices and as I say, if your only tool is a hammer, everything starts looking like a nail. You've got to be intentional about what you do, particularly if you're using edge tools decide is this the right tool. It's why I'm not a big fan of using potato peelers instead of knives. It's not the right tool for the job. And it's your job as a professional, as a professional, if you're working with children, particularly other people's children, then you're going to need to think about and be intentional about the tools you use and make sure that you're developing good habits for long-term learning and safety. So with that, I think that we'll leave it there for this video. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Make the most of every day.